Hi, I'm Pete from Project Heaven and we're back in the engine room. And today I'm gonna to be testing different types of electronic ignition upgrade kits you can get. It occurred to me the other day that uh, I've used lots of these different type of electronic upgrade kits and I'd really like to know which one is actually the best. So I've devised a bench test. It's a little rudimentary, but I think it'll hopefully give us some ideas as to which one of these is the better kit. And I've got most types of kit here. So to start with, as a benchmark, we've got good old fashioned points distributor. So this is just a standard points distributor setup that will have to use a standard resistance coil not a high energy one. So we'll see how that performs as a, as a, as a benchmark. We've then got uh, AccuSpark electronic ignition kit. This one is uh, only suitable for, again for the higher resistance coils, the lower energy coils, a sort of standard sort of thing. So we'll see how that does. Then we've got PowerSpark. Now this is the um, high energy coil version of the, their electronic ignition kit. So we'll see how that performs with a different ignition coil. Then we're moving on to, uh, this is a flamethrower igniter two kit. Uh, this is this same distributor is the one that's in the March formula car that we run. So it'd be really interesting to see how good that is. This is quite a funny one. This is, uh, was given to me by a friend. This is actually brand new, original in the box electronic ignition upgrade kit from God knows when. I've never heard of the make, but it's made in England apparently. Um, and it seems to have a sort of a hall effect sensor to trigger it. So we'll see, we'll see how that does. Um, the next distributor we've got is, this is probably one of the better ones I'd say. This is probably the one I mainly recommend to most people. It's a one, two, three ignition distributor. It's really good because it's computer programmable. You can have any advanced curve you want, you can control the vacuum as well, that as in the, the vacuum advance. Um, yeah, really good bit of kit. But again, this only runs a low energy coil. So we'll see how that does. And there's one more distributor that's not here at the moment because it's in my car, but we're gonna test that too. That's a uh, optical, so lumination. Uh, that is a high energy one. And a lot of people seem to favor that. So we'll see how good that is as well. The two types of coil I've mentioned. So this is the, my favorite sort of lower energy coil three ohm resistance on this, on the uh, primary. And um, yeah, this is what we're using most, most cars. We'll normally replace the coil for this Bosch blue, as you call it. And this is a high energy coil. This is a, uh, like a resin filled one. Um, this came with the power spark kit, I think. So that's got a lower resistance on the primary. It's about 0.8 ohms. So we'll use that for our high energy uh, electronic ignition kits. Okay, so I've set up the points distributor into the machine. Uh, so at the moment, I'm just using this machine to rotate the distributor at a fixed RPM. So our RPM will be constant for the test. And I've got this battery pack up here, giving us the 12 volts that's needed to energize the coil. We've got the Bosch blue coil down here. And then we've got this um, spark gap tester. So at the moment, I've set that to a quarter of an inch. And we'll, for testing the uh, high voltage output will keep that always at quarter of an inch and make sure that's the same each time because of course if we increase the gap then we're going to increase the voltage because the uh, resistance has gone up so and then this machine here my amazing krypton machine uh, i'm just using this at the moment just to uh, read the high tension side just to see how many kilovolts we're, we're generating with our setup so we're just going to record we're going to do two tests basically one test is what's the maximum gap we can get here but before it stops jumping this gap or it starts jumping a gap elsewhere. And we're gonna find out what voltage we get at that fixed gap of quarter of an inch to see how that varies depending on the types of uh, points, electronic points or normal points we're using or the optical uh, setup, you know, so there we go. Right, so I think we're about ready to fire this up. Right, so we turn the motor on, turn on our power. Sparks jump in the gap nicely. And we can see on our machine over here, if we go from this point, which is about eight kilovolts up to 
I'd say we're averaging about, say, 26. So 26 minus 8, which is 18, I think. <laughs> 18 kilovolts is our uh, voltage with that gap. All right, so we've measured our uh, voltage now. We know what that is. We'll keep a note of that. Next thing is we're going to increase this gap until it can't jump it. But I'm not going to do that whilst it's running. <laughs> Okay. okay, it's not able to jump it there. Oh, just about jump it there. It's got a few misfires though. It's just... No. I'd say that is probably our maximum gap we can have on the points. So let's measure that. Okay, so our points achieved a gap of half an inch or in metric, 12 point, 12.8. So we'll say 12.8 mil, yeah? Right, next distributor. All right, so I've got the next distributor in. This one has got the AccuSpark in it, I think. Yeah, there we go. And of course, I need to reset the gap to quarter of an inch. Okay. Got a good spark there. Interesting, so we've got, I'd say about 23 on there, minus eight, so that's 15. 15 kilovolts. Right, so now we know what our voltage is, let's see what uh, maximum gap we can achieve. So the last one was 18 point something, was it? No, 12.8. Uh, 12 so let's go to that first. Okay. Uh, well, let's jump in that gap, no problem. No. Yep. So there we go. Try a little bit more. That's it, that's its limit. There we go, that's the absolute limit. So let's see what that is. There we are, so that is 14.8. So a good improvement over the points. But interestingly, the uh, voltage was lower. All right, let's get the next set of points in there and see how that behaves. Okay, so we've got the other distributor. No, I didn't change the distributor actually. I kept the same distributor and I swapped the electronic control module over to try and keep the test a bit more fair. So we've got the other module in and I've swapped to the high energy coil now because this is the high energy one. Uh, so I just need to reset this gap and then we'll do the next test. All right, here we go. Okay, so there's that one. So that is similar voltage. Oh, maybe there's 24, I'd say. Yeah, 24, 25. But let's see how far the gap can jump. Oh, that's a big gap and it's a strong spark still. It's still jumping, but I can hear it occasionally jump from the HT lead back into the... Uh, Negative on that. So I think that's basically it, that's maxed out. Okay, so that was 19.8. Uh, it's always 0.8, isn't it? I can see that the spark was physically fatter, if you like. It's a much stronger, louder spark coming from that. So this high energy coil definitely is, you can see it's definitely better. 
and it was working well, you know. Um, interesting that the voltage doesn't change. I suspect that probably we'll see that the voltage is pretty much the same throughout all of these actually, and that doesn't really get affected. Unless you obviously up the gap, which is what we're doing here, but then it maxes out the machine. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try and uh, try out this Mobilec uh, electronic ignition system. I've never opened this. I don't know what we've got inside this kit. So this will be quite an interesting unboxing. So let's have a look inside, see what you actually get. I mean, I don't even know if I can use a high energy coil with this. So we'll see what's inside here. I don't know if there's a coil in here. Okay. So we've got a, a very large ignition amplifier. So there's probably some very hefty transistors inside this. There's some strange tube thing. This must be the sensor, so that's obviously some kind of Hall effect sensor. Some stickers and instructions. <laughs> All right, so I've wired this thing up the way it says in the uh, this little leaflet here. So we've got uh, the red yellow wire and yellow wire on the positive. The green wire goes to the negative of the coil, that is. And then we've got um, two little sensing wires plugged in. And then we've got the, this little sensor with the 15 foul gap between the peak of the cam. Um, and that's about it. So let's see if it works. I'm not uh, gonna hold my breath, but we'll see. Nope, <laughs> not, not a lot happening there, I'm afraid. Let's ramp the, uh, I'll take the speed up a bit. No. It's on the small gap. Nope. So I'm afraid that doesn't work. Unless I missed something in the wiring, but, uh, oh well, that was a bit of fun, but never mind. We'll move on to the next thing. Right, next distributors. I think the next one is the 123, which is favoured by both people and myself. It's probably the better one, so let's see how that performs. <laughs> hey, result. Okay, right, so we're all wired up. We've got the uh, 123 distributor in. We're on the Bosch blue coil, so the uh, higher resistance coil. Let's see how it does. Okay, I've got a good regular spark here. And then looking over here, we've got sort of uh, 23-ish 20, kilovolts, minus eight, so 15. So it's the same as all the others, really. Right, so the next thing to do is let's increase this and see at which point it cannot bridge the gap anymore. Yep, still good. <laughs> Still good. Ah, uh, starting to jump a gap there, I think. Oh, it's on the it's on the limit there. There we go. That's its limit. And you, as you can see, like I'm saying, it maxes out the readout because the voltage is so high trying to jump a gap that big. All right, let's measure that. Okay. So that is 14.7. Uh, so, yeah, it's not as big as the high voltage coil, as the uh, high voltage coil, but it's uh, pretty much exactly the same gap as the um, the other the other units, the Accu Spark and the Power Spark. So here I am testing the Lumination ignition system. Uh, you can see here the gap is a really good fat spark. We had a voltage of 17.5 kilovolts and the maximum gap it jumped was 20.5. So that ended up being the best one out of all of the uh, systems we tried out on a six cylinder distributor. Let's look at the size of that. Okay. So I've got one more distributor left to test, which, um, 
I've, la I've left the end because I realized there's not much point in comparing it to the other ones because it's a four cylinder distributor. And I was hoping to take the unit out of this and put it in one of the six cylinder distributors I've got to make the test fair, but it won't fit in there because this is the one out of the March. So just out of interest, we'll do this. But of course, being a four cylinder, it's got more time for dwell. So it's not going to actually, it's going to produce a more powerful spark. I would pretty much guarantee. Um, but anyway, let's, let's see what it can do. So I've reset the, the gap. So our voltage, interestingly, is quite low. It's, uh, it's only 12 uh, kilovolts. But let's see how big we can make the gap. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty loud as well. Oh my god. You probably hear that, how loud it is. I can't believe it. Christ. That's really something. Okay, so basically, it's jumping out the back of the test unit to the back of the machine. You can probably see there. So with that unit, our gap is a whopping 25 millimeters. That's obviously a very good unit, actually. So that if you know for a four-cylinder, um, this igniter two is a good one to go for. Okay, so to summarise, let's go through all the results we've got. The first distributor we tested being the original points distributor, that did pretty well. We got 18 kilovolts of uh, voltage uh, with a quarter-inch gap, and we got 12.8 millimeters was the maximum gap it could jump successfully. The next one, uh, the, the next best performing one was the AccuSpark, which was a 14.8 millimeter gap, similar voltage. Uh, the next one after that was the 123 distributor, this one here, which, it, which was a 14.7 millimeter gap. Uh, that, and then, and then the ne one, next one after that, unfortunately, didn't manage to pass a test, which was the uh, uh, Mobilec system, didn't even work, unfortunately. Um, so, that, so out of all of the low energy systems, the best performing one was the one, two, three. It does also happen to be the most expensive, uh, but it is the one I'd recommend. Having used all of these systems, the most reliable distributor out of all of these is the one, two, three. Then we're talking about high energy ones. So high energy ones, the, uh, the cheapest one, which was the PowerSpark, uh, that gave us a 19.8 millimeter gap, uh, 17 kilovolts. That was pretty damn good. The next one after that was the uh, Luminition, which is the one that's actually in my car now. Um, and the other one we tested, which was high energy, was the four cylinder one. So it'd be good in the future if I can possibly get one of those kits that's for a uh, six cylinder and test that out and see how that performed in relation to the Luminition. But um, having again used these, both these types of kits, I would also personally recommend the Luminition rather than the um, power spark but the luminition kit is very expensive you know the power spark kit you sort of sort of 40 50 quid odd whereas the luminition kit you're into hundreds of pounds so it's all about budget and what you're using it for uh, i hope this video has been useful to you uh, please subscribe if you want to see more videos